Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jack and welcome to today's video. In this review, we're taking a look at the Comica VM10 2R cardioid shotgun microphone. It's a tiny little microphone that can be used with DSLRs, mirrorless cameras and mobile phones and it retails for just under £50, making it super affordable. So I run a small production company here in the UK and I'm often on the lookout for portable gear that offers great performance. Full disclosure, Comica did send me this product to review, but they're not paying me and this is not some kind of advert. All these opinions in this video are my own. So inside the box, we get a microphone and shock mount, a foam windscreen, a wind muff, and two different connection cables. One is for smartphones and one is for cameras. You can tell which one is which because the cable for mobiles is gray on one end. So first impressions of this product is that it's nicely made. It's all aluminium, the body, which really puts it ahead of other microphones on the market. It feels super sturdy in the hand. Now, most of you are familiar with the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now that microphone is super plasticky and in this video, I'll be doing a few comparisons between the two. Whenever I take the Rode VideoMic Pro out and I'm doing a video shoot, I always feel a little uneasy using it because it's just, feels so fragile. This Comica mic is really quite solid and in general has a really premium feel. In fact, here's a quick side-by-side -side between the Comica and the Rode VideoMic Pro, and you can see that the Comica is a lot more discreet, meaning it's great for candid shooting. Now, the Comica doesn't have any kind of battery inside, which is great because I always forget to turn on the Rode VideoMic Pro, and most of the time I also forget to turn it off. And I know that this is a pretty common thing with most videographers, and I think in the newer version they've added like an auto-off functionality on the mic because so many people just kept leaving it on. Now there is a downside to the fact that the microphone isn't powered by battery and that is the fact that there's no high pass filter and there's no audio gain built into the microphone. That basically means that when using this mic you have to rely entirely on the preamps inside your camera and if you're someone with a Canon, I'm, I'm afraid to let you know that Canon preamps are notorious for being pretty shoddy. The Panasonic GH5 though isn't so bad and I'm using that right now and I have the microphone set to zero and we'll be cutting shortly to how this mic actually sounds later on in the video. So I suppose the only way to actually really review a microphone is to test it in a variety of scenarios. So right now I'm using the Rode NTG1, which is plugged into my Tascam field recorder, and these two are great together. But the thing is, they're gonna set you back about 300 pounds, which isn't cheap. And if you're someone that just wants to shoot vlogs in, in your office or in your home, or you're someone that just wants to cover events, this, this setup isn't really that portable or practical for that kind of purpose. So let's switch to the Comica. Okay, so this is the Comica mic plugged directly into my GH5 at zero dB. Now, with a Rode Video Mic Pro, for example, I would usually set the dB to minus 12, and I'd put the boost up on the microphone, but obviously you can't do this with the Comica because there's no internal boost. Now, I'm sat about 50 centimeters away from the microphone, and it's just right on top of my camera. Now, most people buying this microphone are probably gonna be people looking to vlog or do some travel videography not people necessarily looking for a really pro setup. One thing to remember is that microphones always sound best if you can get them as close as you can to the talent. So right now my microphone is literally here. So where you see my finger just go off screen, that's where the microphone is and you can hear me just tapping it. Having a microphone on top of the camera does cause some issues in the fact that there is a big distance between where my voice is being picked up. It's always good to have a microphone close to your chest, picks up those bassy notes, and just generally sounds a lot better. Now, if I grab the Comica off the top of my camera right now and put it as close as I can, you'll be able to hear how much better it sounds closer to me. So here's the microphone really close to me, and I'm assuming, you know, the audio is going to be a lot clearer, a lot crisper, less sort of noise. So, you know, in some situations you could put this mic on a little tripod or something near talent if you're doing interviews, and this should give you an idea of how it sounds. Now let's have a quick change to the camera's microphone, because the Panasonic GH5 has a built-in microphone, but obviously, like with most DSLRs and most mirrorless cameras, built-in mics are usually pretty awful. So if I just quickly unplug the Comica. So now you guys should hear what the microphone sounds like from the camera. And I'm assuming it is pretty bad, and you probably don't want to be listening to this for too long. But the one thing to remember is that little microphones that you can stick on top of your camera, when you think of the price of this one, just how much you can improve your audio quality. And if we quickly cut back to my Rode NTG1, then you can really hear the difference between a professional audio recorder and a camera's built-in mic. Now let's just switch to the Rode VideoMic Pro and let's hear how that sounds. So right now I have the Rode VideoMic Pro plugged in at zero dB on the back just to make the test fair versus the Comica. So this is what the Rode VideoMic Pro sounds like. 
So I've switched back to the comma canal, but let's take this outside in a real world environment and let's see how it handles wind and other environmental noises. So right now we are in the great outdoors shooting with the GH5 and the Comica mic. So the Comica's plugged straight into the GH5 and I've had to set the camera's audio gain to zero dB. Because there is no boost on this mic as it's not powered by any kind of battery, you need to set the levels in the camera to be a bit higher than you might with say the Rode Video Mic Pro. So this may cause a little bit of noise because you'll be using the camera's preamps and I've seen a couple of reviews of this product as well plug it into a cannon, you're gonna get some really noisy sound. So right now I'm stood about two meters away from the camera and we have the wind muff on the Comica mic. So this should block out some wind sounds if there are any and hopefully the audio should be quite clear. Obviously I won't know until I see this later, but it should give you guys a good indication of how this mic sounds. So now we're gonna to change to the foam filter which comes in the package, which won't cut out as much wind noise, but let's see how this sounds. So now we've just switched to the foam filter on the Comica mic, and to be honest, most people will probably be using this filter if they're shooting in a studio or indoors. This kind of filter isn't as good for shooting outdoors because again, it's not got any kind of wind blocking ability. It has got a bit, but just not as good as the wind muff. But again, it's really good that both of these are included with the microphone package. So now we're gonna quickly switch to the microphone with no filter on at all, just purely the microphone open to the elements. So now we're using the microphone with no filter on at all, and you probably will be picking up a lot more sort of wind sounds, ambient sounds, versus using these. So now we're gonna to switch to the Rode VideoMic Pro, and this has the foam filter on. So now we've switched to the Rode VideoMic Pro on the GH5, and to make this test fair, I've set the audio gain in camera to zero, and also the gain on the microphone itself to zero to kind of reflect the Comica mic, and hopefully they should be similar kind of input levels. So now let's take a look at how the Comica sounds on my OnePlus 7 Pro. So right now we're shooting this video on my OnePlus 7 Pro, and I've got the Comica plugged in with the wind muff. Now the one weird thing about this mic is that with my OnePlus 7 Pro, I need to plug it in after I've started recording using Open Camera App. Most people who have OnePlus 7 Pros will know that it actually doesn't support external mics natively, and you have to use an app from the App Store. So right now we started recording, then we plugged in the mic, and you should be able to hear the difference. If we just quickly unplug the microphone, it will switch to the camera's microphone, and you should be able to tell that it is pretty bad compared to the Comica on top. So I'm really impressed with this so far with how this sounds. Now obviously the Comica isn't built just for DSLRs and mirrorless, it's also built for mobile phones. So let's quickly get this thing hooked up to my OnePlus 7 Pro, and let's hear how it sounds. So right now I'm recording this video with the Comica plugged into my OnePlus 7 Pro. I'm using the Open Camera app because most of you guys know that the OnePlus 7 Pro doesn't support external microphones with the native camera app. So if I just go ahead and unplug this mic, you should hear a difference in the sound quality. And I can imagine that this sound quality is pretty bad and I can't imagine it's good at all. The Comica is a vast improvement over the OnePlus 7 Pro's built-in microphone and hopefully this video will show that. So I guess that's pretty much it for my review and comparison of the Comica VM10 to our microphone. I hope this video was useful, especially with the comparisons to the Rode VideoMic Pro and the Rode NTG1. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a big like, and of course subscribe for more of my tech reviews, and be sure to hit that little alert button to be notified when I upload something new. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.